Hi, Jeff Spira here, and today I want to talk to you a bit about um, how to build the frames for my ply on frame boats. Now, I get I get a lot of questions and a lot of people not really understanding the drawings and things like that. So let me just talk about frames for a little bit. Now, I design my boats. Um, I loft them. Uh, using a CAD program. So my frames dimensions are correct um, on, on some of the draw on all the drawings. <laughs> if there is if there is an issue usually the first builder will come and say hey there's something wrong with this and then I'll go back and relook at it and find the problem and, and correct them. So but they're all lofted on CAD. Now I don't I, I, I dimension them using what the CAD result is. So they're drawn, you know, to, to precise scale, and then the, um, the the CAD program itself decides uh, what the actual dimensions are. And I set it for an eighth of an inch, so um, re resolution. So each of the dimensions is is rounded to the nearest eighth of an inch. So so you know, um, <clears throat> and then I um, and then I design the uh, thickness of the uh, the material and the and the width of the frames and all that. So, um, and I I design the width of the frames around stock sizes. So if it's a two by four, the width of the frame is uh, is uh, you know the four inch is really three and a half, and the thickness is really one and a half. So, can this be off one way or another? Yeah, but the outside edge of the frame is is the precise dimension. So. So that's why I dimension it from the outside edge. Now, if you also notice, I um, overlap the frames. Uh, I don't do that with the transom. The transom is made of all butted joints. Now, some people say, well, that might not be strong enough. Yeah, but the entire outside of the frame is covered with a with plywood gusset. So that ties the strength of those together. So again, I, my boats are, you know, they're not, uh, what should I say? They're not uh, wooden boats, traditional wooden boats that are, that are a bunch of loose pieces just held together with fasteners. Mine are, mine's a bonded unibody structure. So, so that uh, outside covering on the transom will, um, will provide it the strength and tie the strength of those uh, frame elements together. So you just, you just glue them together uh, and uh, some, some guys elect to screw them as well, use those angled sort of screw holes and things like that, which you're welcome to do if you wish, or, or if you really want, you can, you can create half lap joints and all that, but it's really not necessary that that joint be very good, so, so I just, I just kind of recommend that you glue them, you can clamp them together and then until the glue dries and then, uh, and then it's strong enough to, to set it up and then eventually cover it with, uh, you know, notch it out for the shear clamp and the chine log, and then um, and then cut it out, uh, cut out the uh, the the covering of it, you know, the plywood covering of it, and glue and screw that in place, and that's the final tie together. But the central frames are are, are usually gap uh, lap joints, and and I do that um, to make it easy. I mean, could you use half laps? Sure. Could you use, you know, stepped or Morris and Tenton, sure, if you feel like it, but there's really no need to. The, the full lap uh, gives you plenty of uh, bonding surface and makes it plenty strong. And, you know, it looks a little, I, some people think it looks cheesy. I think it looks fine. I, I have no, no problem with it. But um, anyway, so um, now the other thing is I, I, I lay out the actual positions of the frame. You know, I mean, I get a lot of emails and guys say, what? Why don't you just give us the angles and we can set our, uh, you know, chop saw and just pull it across and everything's wonderful. Well, you can't really build it with angles because, you know, and I, and I, I did this in a blog post. I Pardon my trigonometry here, but in a blog post I talk about uh, if it's a two-foot high frame and you're off by two degrees, which is about all of many of those chop saws can, can handle, that frame could be an inch off at the top. Well, that's two inches in the width of, of, the, of the boat. So how fair would that curve be if you're two inches off on one frame uh, you know, to the next? So it, it, it makes much, much more sense to lay it out. And 
So the first thing you would do would be would be actually lay out the points of the of the uh, you know the, the frame, and you lay it out um, uh, on a surface. A lot of guys use plywood. Some guys use uh, wallboard because it's white. And uh, what I like to do is I, I have a roll of butcher paper that uh, that I keep in my shop, and I just tape it down, and then uh, and then lay out the frames on that. So. You lay it out to full scale, so you draw the center line, then you go each way for the upper corner, and up from the the finished edge to the upper corner, and uh, and you know then the lower corner, and then you use a straight edge to draw the lines, and and it's pretty easy to get them within an eighth of an inch there, which means that uh, you know it's pretty easy to fair everything up with a with a um, a uh, um, block plane once once it's all together so that it, everything is beautiful and fair so that that's the that's the right right way to do it so um, this is true of both V bottom hulls uh, and of uh, flat bottom hulls and I'll kind of put a couple of uh, pictures up here so that you that you kind of understand uh, what I'm talking about when they when they go together they're you know a series of, of various steps and things um, I sometimes use floor timbers on the V-bottom hulls, and sometimes not. Sometimes I'll just uh, design, if it doesn't have a very steep V, I'll just cut it out of a 2x6 or 2x8. Or sometimes I just um, use the deck beam to tie, the, tie it together on the lower end, and just, uh, and then, you know, you're going to actually connect each, each of, the, of the bottom elements to, uh, to the keelson later anyway, so it's really not important that 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 joint there is is particularly uh, strong because the because the um, the uh, uh, side the bottom to the to the keelson joint is important, but the bottom to the other side of the bottom isn't isn't particularly important because uh, just just in the design element of it, it doesn't have to carry that much load. So anyway, um, here's a here's a couple of uh, photos of how that looks. Um, and uh, and then you would uh, lay the elements out on uh, on a on the the layout and uh, and then um, you know block them up if they're if they're raised that sort of thing and then uh, just uh, lay them all together and make sure all is square and then uh, then uh, pull them apart and apply you know glue whether you're using epoxy or um, or you could use polyurethane glue. I, I talk about that in some of my other uh, things, and then uh, and then screw them together. Now the next step is is by putting in the Keelson cutout. Um, this is a you know I, I, again I get a lot of emails of guys saying no oh, your Keelson cutout's too wide. I, I don't know what's going on here. It's uh, you know it's only a five and a half inch wide two by six keelson and you've got a seven inch hole that it goes in there what's up with that well what you're really looking at there is um is what what's called limber holes so there is there should be a gap between the sides of the keelson and the uh the cutout for the uh, uh that you made for the keelson in, in the in the frame so and that allows water to drain between frames so it's it's really uh it's really done for that purpose so um, anyway, you would uh, you would uh, cut those out. Now, if you look at the drawings, it usually shows a radius between the, the Kielsen cutout top and the Kielsen cutout side, and this is usually given as something like let's say it says half one half r, or it'll say r one half. Typical. Yeah, that's that's the normal thing I would do. Well, that means a one inch diameter. Now you can take and use a, um, a circle template, you know, uh, if you wish, um, to do that. Uh, there's, you know, to, to draw out that, uh, that hole. But remember, if it says, you know, R3 eighths, then you really looking at, uh, at, at a three quarter inch diameter. The radius is half of the diameter. So, so, um, so then you would, you would uh, use a three quarter inch hole hole to draw that and draw that out and then later cut it out. Um, the other trick that a lot of boat builders use is they just they just drill a hole. <laughs> so if you get a if you get a three uh, three quarter inch drill or you know from a brazen bit or an electric drill whatever uh, 
you know, a twist drill. Um, you can drill that hole and then it'll be a 3 8 radius. And so you just line it up so that the uh, edges meet the, the, the uh, sides of your cutout and then you can, you can take a jigsaw or whatever and cut out that, uh, that hole. And that'll create the cutouts. Now as you get towards the bow, particularly in V-bottom boats, uh, a lot of times there isn't enough room for this cutout. And if, if you know, because maybe it's, it's too short, well then you just simply cut the point back by the thickness of your uh, keelson. So if it's a, you know, if it's a, if it's a two by six keelson, then you would cut an inch and a half off so that the, the, the inch and a half thick part of the keelson uh, go, goes flush against the uh, against the um, the cutout so um, some of them are one by you know the, some of the smaller boats use one by which is three quarters of an inch uh, and then the bigger boats all use two by I, I tend to use two by eights in the larger boats two by six in the mid-sized boats and some and some of the larger uh, V bottoms and then uh, two by four in, in some of the some of the smaller but heavy boats, you know, like uh, I don't can't can't remember which ones, but but there's co quite a number of them that uh, that we might use a two by four as a keelson in the along the center line. So so pay attention to that, and, and that kind of tells you how to go ahead and make the uh, the cutouts. So anyway, hope you enjoyed. Um, this is uh, an another in the in the. Yes, you can build a boat series. So uh, I haven't made one for a while, and I'm I'm, I'm going to get back into it and, and continue with uh, with a lot of these details, giving you more and more information on how to go about doing it. So um, again, hope you enjoyed. Uh, be sure and like, share, and subscribe, and uh, um, stop by my website if you want to look at the different boat plans. Uh, I'll leave a link uh, to it below, and uh, and thank you for watching.